just was born with this gift. Dali's childhood paintings of Kadakes show his incredible natural talent. He made this one when he was just 15. Dali was in his early 20s when he first heard about a group of experimental artists in Paris who were creating strange, fantastical work. Greetings! 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 And also, he was inspired by the psychoanalytical theories of the great Sigmund Freud. Freud believed that all of us have got this inner unconscious world in which our emotional and sexual feelings are repressed and that the only way to express ourselves is to release these emotions but without censoring what comes out. And the Surrealists were fascinated by the bizarre, quickly decided that they needed to explore this new forbidden landscape of the unconscious mind. I've heard a lot about this quite complicated term, the paranoic critical method. What does it mean? I think the main thing of interest is the notion of paranoia. This is what Dali was really interested in in the late 1920s, early 1930s and then beyond. He saw paranoia as an essential mechanism in the construction of reality so that when we see, let's say, some rocks or a cliff, we could say that's just some rocks or a cliff, but we could also see in it... Look at the camel. I can see, what, there with the, yeah, right. It looks like he's just squatted down in the middle of the desert. Exactly. The human form, perhaps even something looking at us, a big pair of eyes, exactly what would be classified as a paranoic delusion. Dali, in a sense, explores and develops this idea in his painting. So, for example, here, seen from one angle, we have a scene perhaps in a desert or on a beach, a number of figures in front of a dwelling with some trees behind it. Then turn it and we see fairly clearly a human face. Now, what's the correct way to interpret the image? Dali's saying that both of those ways of reading the visual data give us different answers. Exactly the kind of emphasis on double images that Dali was so fascinated in. Dali's arguing we interpret the visual data that we're receiving and we can interpret it in different ways and that there's a fundamental question about how we interpret the world around us. Like a circus showman, he constantly engineered weird stunts that would attract headlines. One of many was his 12 meter long loaf of bread. Many felt that Dali was undermining his reputation. They were dismayed that the man who'd created such groundbreaking and influential work was descending into buffoonery. But Dali's antics popularized surrealism, taking it far beyond the elite world of fine art. I just should start by saying I really love that ad. Yeah. Why a gorilla? Why not? Well, but isn't that precisely the point of surrealism? Uh, things are so much more beguiling the less you understand them. Yeah. But something else like, I don't know, a lizard doing the can-can, that, that wouldn't work. It could have been. You see, that's the wrong lens. That's the lens to try and understand why, to try and apply a cognitive analysis to it, is to miss the point. Its, it's start point is not, I want you to think differently about this. The start point is, I want you to feel an emotion about that. The art of a great salesman is they don't have to sell. And, and surrealism takes you away from the real, quite literally, into another place. And it makes you feel something that you can't quite rationalize. If you take Dali himself, I think he really understood branding in its truest sense. He understood the importance of being, um, of, of the element of surprise. And that's just great. And yet he was very consistent in that, included in how he presented himself. And, and that's, that's, that's the mark of a great brand.